Hello everyone, Subject Zero here. Lately we have seen more and more news about silicon anode batteries and the news are good, but we still have problems to solve. The optimal battery for the next 5 years should be able to at least double the current energy density, have the cost per cell, get 5 times the current charge cycle and charge in less than 20 minutes. Luckily for us, this technology has been available for the past decade. But why haven't we seen it anywhere? But first, we need to understand the current state of battery technologies. Most battery anodes are mainly composed of graphite. So far, this technology has reached on average a 243 watt hour per kilogram, which is the case of the Panasonic NCR18650B. But why is it stuck at this level for the past few years? We need to understand how these batteries work, and it's quite simple. The battery is comprised by the anode and cathode, which in turn are separated by a porous material that is merged into an electrolyte gel or liquid depending on the technology. When the battery is discharged, the lithium ions flow from the anode to the cathode and the electrons follow the same route. Quite simple to understand, but the real problem lies in the materials used in these batteries. The anode and cathode are usually matrices that allows the lithium to be stored within its cells, and that limits the amount of lithium that can be traded. And because of that, there is a maximum amount of lithium that can be used in the batteries. Basically, the limiting factor here is the graphite which is able to hold a limited number of ions. On the other hand, we could use silica, which is a good candidate to increase the number of lithiums that can be absorbed. But silicon anode has a serious problem, and that is that it is brittle. Although the word brittle is not the right word here, but to understand the problem, you could try to visualize it by trying to bend glass. In a nutshell, what happens is that when the transfer of ions happen, the silica expands up to four times. So the volume expands dramatically in comparison to current technology that only expands about 10% of its volume. That large expansion ends up damaging the battery, which in turn loses its electrical contact, killing the battery over time. For the past decade, companies have found ways to circumvent the problem by either creating layers that absorb the expansion, such as porous layers, polymers, and nanofibers, which the last one would be the best solution by far. But what makes silicon a good candidate for batteries? In short, they can hold more energy than other conventional batteries. Just to give you an idea, the theoretical energy capacity of these batteries is about 12 times the current graphite based ones. That means that a Tesla car will use only 650 batteries and have the same range that it has today. Make it 1200 batteries and we are talking about over a thousand kilometers per charge. This also means higher safety standards since you have less batteries to worry about. And it means that the cooling system can be more efficient and take the extra space available. Battery safety has been a huge issue for for electric cars and it's one of the biggest concerns among new adopters for the new technology. Not only silica can increase the total energy density, but it's also very cheap, which will dramatically decrease the price of the electric cars, where the battery prices is estimated to be in between 20 to 30 percent of the final price. Silicon-based batteries will bring that down to about 5 percent. Also when the volume expansion is solved, these batteries will get a much higher charge recharge cycle rate. Currently batteries can last up to 300 cycles or more or less a year. Solving the problem and we could get up to 5,000 cycles, which it comes about 10 years. And let us not forget the weight. The weight of the batteries will also dramatically decrease. Theoretically, the total weight could go down about 50%, which would help increase the range since there would be less inertia for the electric car to accelerate. But all of this sounds too good to be true. What is the catch? The problem relies in scaling the technology. The silicon nanofibers are tricky to make at the rate that they will be in demand. This is a problem for all batteries, to be honest, and we all know this from Tesla. The Gigafactory was first designed to make batteries in large scales and not cars. Silicon anode-based batteries nanofibers are tricky to make, and scaling this technology is still the bottleneck. But what are the current solutions being proposed? The nanofiber tech is by far the best solution that has been presented for the issues the silicates present. If you never heard of CVD, it's a technology used to technically print components in the molecular level. This technology is slowly getting more attention since MIT found a way to make graphene in large scale using CVD. So how it works is that it sprays a chemical vapor with its constituents that you want to react in a film. Depending on the properties of the film or compound, you will get a natural structure. 
You can watch my video on CBD that explains how they use this technology to make graphene increase the yield of it. Now for silicon anode, you would have to tweak the CBD printing in order to get a final viable structure. And this is the part where most companies are struggling with. And in conclusion, there are still many obstacles for this technology to come about, but companies are actively working around the clock to become the first to master this technology. Now, I don't think that it will take decades for these batteries to start appearing in our gadgets. As a matter of fact, they are already commercially available, but not in large scale, like for electric cars, for instance. Overall, I believe that they would first be introduced to be used in cell phones and computers, dramatically increasing the usage time of these devices with less space. All we need now is to have some patience and just wait for the good things to come. Alright folks, that's it. We're done here.